you all voted and George Washington Rye was the winner. So we made a clone recipe ingredients kit for that. Today we're going to do a clone recipe of the George Washington Rye. Come on. So the George Washington Rye, or a lot of people call it just GWR for short, uh, the mash bill is 60% corn, 35% rye, and 5% malted barley. This, um, the process for this recipe was a double pot still distillation. It wasn't aged. It was put into uncharred oak barrels and sold directly uh, that way, unaged. So that's what we're going to do, uh, except I'm not going to age it. I'm not going to put it in an oak barrel, but, uh, you know, no medium char aging or anything like that. This is a white whiskey and, uh, I, I'm not sure yet, but I think I'm going to even cheat the distillation process simply because I'm a big fan of a one and done. And, uh, I may go middle ground between one and done and the, double distillation and I might do a one and a half run and um, I can do a video on all that all that kind of stuff if you guys would like you know what's a single run what's a double run what's a one and a half run that kind of stuff just let me know if you want me to do that but we're gonna get right into this so um, this kit does a six gallon batch so there is 12 pounds of grain in this kit for um, you know a, a starting gravity of around 1.065 so we've got one and a half pounds of malted rye it's actually 12 and a half pounds of grain in the kit not exactly 12 so slightly over um, we've got four pounds of uh, ground yellow corn we've got seven pounds of rye and I use malted rye and that's another interesting part about this recipe this recipe originally called for uh, six, like I said 60% rye did I say that wrong earlier anyway 60% rye 35% corn and 5% malted barley so it only had 5% malted grains in there which if you do the math or, or when I did the math of the PPG and the diastatic power, it's not quite enough to convert all the starches unless I just did something wrong. And so in this kit, I include malted rye instead of regular rye. I think the flavor will be a little bit better and you won't have any problems converting all the starches if you don't want to use the uh, liquid enzymes that are included with the kit. You can run this kit two different ways. You can run it with the liquid enzymes, can easily convert all the starches, no problem. Or you can do the conversion with the malted grain. And since the rye is malted, um, there's plenty, uh, it has plenty of diastatic power to do it traditionally that way. And so, uh, it comes with the yeast that you need. It comes with the liquid enzymes. And of course, comes with instructions just like every still in the clear kit and a handful of the um, STC guide sheets like calculating PPG, um, how to use liquid enzymes, that kind of stuff. So uh, doing this video, I'm going to use the liquid enzymes. If you would like me to uh, do this same kit but not use the liquid enzymes and just do all the conversion with the malted grains, let me know. I'll do a separate video for that. So um, that's the kit, and I'll put a link down in the uh, description uh, where you can go and get that. We sell it on the Still in the Clear website. Uh, so let's get into it thing I'm doing is I've got four gallons of our total six gallons in the pot. I'm going to heat it up uh, to 190 plus degrees. We're going to put the corn in there and we're going to thoroughly gelatinize the corn. Step one. Okay, so now that I've got, now that we've got the water to 190 degrees, actually went all the way up to boiling, I turned the heat down and now I'm going to start stirring in the corn. I'm going to stir it in nice and slowly to avoid the clumps. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos where we're doing all grain starch conversion, this is uh, 
You don't want any of the dough balls. You don't want big clumps of the milled corn sticking together. Um, also, the convert the conversion process is very much dependent upon how well you've gelatinized your grains. Corn is one of the hardest grains to gelatinize, and so it does take extra time and higher temperatures compared to other grains. So I'm going to uh, stir this with the heat on to maintain temperature uh, for 90 minutes. And normally I would use my electric mixer, um, just a simple one that I made with two by fours basically and uh, works great. But with this batch, I'm just going to stand over the fire here and stir for an hour and a half. Woohoo! Lots of fun. So I'm finished with the uh, gelatinization of the corn. You can see how gelatinous it looks. Very sticky and clumpy together. It didn't quite take 90 minutes. And, you know, this is when you can tell your gelatinization, gelatinization is done. So, you know, if it happens sooner than the 90 minutes, uh, you can stop. And the higher your temperature is above 190 degrees, the, uh, the quicker it will gelatinize. Now I'm checking the temperature to make sure it's below 190 so that I can add the high temperature alpha amylase. And we're 182-ish, so I'm going to add it in. And we should be able to quickly see the stickiness and clumpiness go away. I'll get it all in there and I'll stir it up. So this should just take literally a few seconds. So if I try and scoop it off of the bottom, so if I try and scoop it off of the bottom, you'll see it is no longer thick and clumpy. That is the alpha amylase breaking the sticky starch into long chain sugars. So, yeah, as you can see, that, that worked perfectly. Now, we're going to let this temperature fall down to uh, 157, 158, and then we're going to add in the other, the other grains, which are the malted rye and the malted barley. So the temperature has dropped. It's actually just below 160, and I'm going to go ahead and stir in uh, the malted rye. And now the malted barley. And it's beginning to get thick again because now we are at 12 pounds of grain and only four gallons of water. So we're at three pounds per gallon. Get this stirred in and then we'll let, ooh, we'll let this rest. I'll give it, um, you know, 45 minutes, an hour. I'll put the lid on, hold the temperature a little bit. Now that the temperature is down to 120, I'm going to add in the 
uh, glucoamylase. You can use this at any point under 140 degrees. You can even add it when you pitch your yeast. I'm just putting it in now. And I'm going to add the last two gallons of water. All that's left now is I'm going to take a sample, get a specific gravity, and once the temperature falls down to around the uh, yeast pitching temperature, which is like 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'll take a sample. We'll see where we are as far as specific gravity goes. And hopefully we're around 1.06568, somewhere around there. Could be a little bit higher. If we didn't get a full conversion, it'll be a little bit lower. So the mash made it down to uh, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which is where I pitched the yeast. Uh, but I took a sample first, and the initial gravity or starting gravity or original gravity, however you want to put it, is at 1.062, uh, and we we were aiming for 1.063 to 1.065. It's a little bit shy, means I didn't get a complete conversion, but that is super close. So I'm happy with it. At this point, if you wanted a higher gravity uh, than 1.063, or I'm at 62, 1.062, um, you can add sugar at this point to get it to wherever you want the original gravity to be. I'm going to leave it like this. This is about where I like it. If you want a higher yield, you need to add more sugar. I'm okay with the lower yield. Um, the George Washington rye is a double distilled uh, whiskey. I think I might do a one and a half run instead of a full double run. We'll see once uh, everything is fermented out. Now, if you're interested in checking out the ingredients kit uh, for this recipe that comes with everything you need, I will put a link up here or I'll put a link down in the show notes. Or, and if you like videos about how to make mashes, I've got a whole playlist of all the different mashes that I've done on video. So Check them out, and we'll see you on the next one.